December 1st, 2015. Suna Kokal is a Turkish artist. She's skilled, if you want to put it that way, in many a genre. In particular, the art of Ebru. Now, if you have no idea what that is, it will be explained and displayed in a moment. So be prepared to be taken aback, because it's quite stunning. The Turkish Embassy and Turkish Cultural and Social Society in Bahrain, in collaboration with the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, invited Suna Kokal to display her art at the Art Centre for a few days. That was between November and December. And conduct a workshop as such, where visitors eagerly tried their hand at some, um, let's say, potential masterpieces. Suna was born in Germany, but now lives in Turkey, and of course speaks very fluent German and Turkish, with considerable English. But if given the choice, English would not be her first interview language. But as you can see here, she does just fine. Hello, my name is Suna Kocal. I come from Turkey to Bahrain. I live in the city Yalova. This is the other side from the Marmara Sea near Istanbul, other side from Istanbul. And I am traditional Turkish art. I make traditional Turkish art. It is uh, Ebru. Uh, the English name is uh, marbling. And then I make also uh, miniature art and illumination art. Uh, in the old time, I can make uh, traditional Turkish ceramic, iznik ceramic uh, tiles and kati art. I'm here from the Turkish ambassador, uh, Mrs. Hatun Demirer has. Uh, and then Turkish Cultural Society and uh, Turkish Airlines. Uh, every day we have uh, on the art center make uh, workshops and 40 and 50 people come here and uh, they are was, uh, very interesting and happy because uh, we, this art is a very therapeutic art and you can have from the water, from the colors, and inside in the colors are oxen gold, and they give your um, happiness. In this uh, picture, in the background, is Ebru art from me, and then here is miniature art. This is the first fountain, fountain in Istanbul. It's from the Fatih Sultan Mehmet. The, uh, he has uh, Istanbul uh, from the Constantine one, and then he make they make this uh, fountain, and I make the picture on miniature art, and then Hussein Kutl, he is the famous Hussein Hat, uh, the name of this art uh, in English calligraphy, and he is the big, the famous uh, Hat Hat uh, in Turkey. He is uh, Hussein Kutl. Popular indeed, judging by the turnout, and for each class held, Turkish compatriot Sabahat Izik who is well known for her Rotary Club connections in Bahrain, decided to act as MC and give all present a very enlightening introduction to Suna's work. And she ran a lot of workshops. She did exhibition outside the Turkey, like Canada, Japan, and Australia, and Germany, and the Balkan countries. Now she is here with her exhibition, but she was here last year for, with her workshop. And... Uh, her uh, art is what I see on the water is what she says is the colors are dancing on the water. It's not just Ebru. The Ebru name comes from Middle Asia when the Turkish states are moving from Asia to Anatolia. Uh, the Ebru called in old Chaatay states in Asia, the name is Ebru, same as what we are using right now. Then it came to Iran, it became Abru. Then it came to Anatolia, again turned back to Ebru. When it went to Europe, it became Turkish paper. But after some uh, century, they said, it looks like marble. Why not calling the marbling art, paper marbling art? But actually, uh, Suna is so devoted to this art, and she wants to keep the name as Ebru, and she wants to work with Ebru and she did her passionate with UNESCO. In 2009, they applied to UNESCO. This is a Turkish traditional art and living art from the uh, centuries back and it should be recognized by UNESCO. From 2009, 2014, last year they achieved with a couple of her friends and UNESCO recognized the art is heritage living art of Turkish traditional art. She's so happy, she's so excited, 
and she went up there when the decision came from UNESCO, they waited. And then I saw that moment actually in TV and in newspaper last year. It was a great success for us. And now what she's using in here as a medium for her art, colors, brushes and water. And there is some ingredients in that water, special ingredients. These are all made natural raw material. The pigments, which if I am not sure if you know anything about the coloring, and uh, the colors are based on pigment, ferric, and then all from soil. It has some times to prepare them, but at the end you receive the powder from the soil. Then you mix with the ox gall, which is coming from animal uh, blood, I mean, uh, bladder, you know, uh, they extract uh, this solution. Then it's called ox gall, which gives the strength to color, not too deep in the water. It stays on the water. Then water, of course. These are the mixture of these colors. These are the pigments and natural colors. And then the water in the tray is uh, by, I mean, the water in the tray created by uh, one of the bushes from Anatolia. The bushes have something inside. We call the Gevan bush and then the Kitre. When they cut the bush, the solution comes out such as like glue or like liquid something, but heavy liquid, which is like a mastica. But when it comes out, it crystallizes immediately. And they have to powder it again. They have to grain it. And they mix with the water. And that creates the surface for this art. And then the water, I mean, the pigment uh, color, which is mixed with the ox gall, doesn't sink down. And then the surface of the water is ready for that nice artwork. And each and every artwork is individually a piece of art. You cannot repeat them. You cannot copy them. You cannot redo it again, the same thing. You cannot work on it. Once you do, it is done. It's your it's unique. unique art and unique piece of art. This is Geg Hopkins with artist Suna Kokal at the Bahrain Art Center for whodoeswhat.tv.